optimistic ab about this coming season with the New Orleans Saints? Well, to be frank, you can't get much worse. I think Barry made a great point. This is definitely an average football team. Seven and nine is exactly what they were. But just like Barry said, they looked really good at times and they looked just terrible at times. And I, you look at the 40% turnover of this roster. But I do like some of these draft picks. I like Rankins. Michael Thomas was a steal. Some analyst with the NFL Network and ESPN and such had him as the number one receiver in the draft. Vaughn Bell, I think, is your ball hawk in the secondary. But there are way too many questions to sit here and go, oh, this is going to be a much better Saints team this year than they were last year. I like some of the offensive moves to get Kobe Fleener, who is a big 6'6 target for Drew Brees. Like I said, I like Michael Thomas. I like some of the moves they made, and I talked to the professor earlier. It's almost crazy to think that skill position-wise on the offensive side of the football with players being healthy and getting Kobe Fleener again and Michael Thomas, this offense might be better than they were last year. And for sure, I think yeah. some of the moves on defense made this team better. But I just don't know if this team is any better than that seven and nine, eight and eight, maybe nine and seven. We got to see them play first. But on paper, I think this is going to be a better team than last year. But you also have to remember their schedule is really harsh this year compared to last year. Right, right. Good, good, good point. This schedule is a very difficult schedule. Um, I think it's it has to rank up there in the top five, in my opinion, uh, based upon some of the teams we're playing and how we're playing these guys as well. So we, we're going to talk a little bit about the schedule as well. Uh, but those are great points, Brendan. Uh, Coach, I want to ask you this. Uh, based upon some articles that Barry and John have written, <laughs> you guys have really brought to point this issue the saints seem like they have a lack of urgency that's what you wrote barry and why is it that we don't have any progress to date on the drew breezes contract situation what's your opinion there coach i think mickey loomis does a very poor job of negotiating contracts when he doesn't have the hammer and when you're negotiating uh with a drew Brees. And just like remember Jimmy Graham, when Jimmy Graham had uh, had an equal amount of stroke to Mickey Loomis, then he, uh, Loomis does a very poor job of closing the deal. We saw that in the first Drew Brees contract, uh, or his second one, really, with the Saints. Uh, how long that took, how contentious that, that uh, has been, and I think some of that contentious attitude is continuing uh, to this day. Uh, so I think Loomis doesn't do a very good job of, uh, of negotiating with, uh, with, with the real stars, the people that have to get signed. Because the Saints did get under the salary cap enough that it didn't so much become a salary cap issue with Breeze, even though you would think a $30 million cap hit uh, certainly should be uh, is something that could be worked out if you extend – the contract and spread the amount over a period of time. And good teams do that because how many good teams, I'm talking about traditionally good teams, go into any season with their quarterback in the last year of their contract like the Saints are this year? Mm -hmm. And the answer is none. I try to study organizations, find out who does the job the best, and then find out why those organizations – do the things that they do, and why they do the things that they do. The closest that we could come to a situation like this were the Ravens a few years ago when Joe Flacco was in the last year of his contract, and Flacco decided to play it out. They end up winning the Super Bowl, but that was a much, that was a very much, much different situation than the Saints with Drew Brees. It's, uh, and it's not so much that Brees, that this, turmoil of contract is going to affect Breeze because he, Breeze is so competitive, he's going to do what he does. But I think that that's an unsettling feeling throughout the whole team because they're seeing that this club is not taking care 
of the best player in the history of the franchise. And they're not putting him in a situation that it puts everybody on the team at ease. And Bree showed me last year, not only through his performance, but the fact that the two injuries that he had, he came back very quickly and performed at a high level. That's the first indication that you're over the hill when it takes longer to come back from an injury. Breeze two times came back from injuries to only miss one game during the course of the year. So that shows he's got something left and he takes such great care of himself and he trains all year. He knows what he's doing. So he's got, he's got enough left that extending the contract and getting well under the salary cap to where they could really uh, do some things to get like a real pass rusher. They should not have had an excuse with anybody this year getting who they needed to get if they'd have handled the Breeze contract situation the right way. But it goes back once again. And well, I think, uh, and uh, uh, I think the professor is right on it. This whole administration has got to be on notice, not on the hot seat, but they've got to be on notice that they've got us into a situation of being in the middle of the pack in the vast netherworld, I call it, between winners and losers in the league, championship contenders and pretenders, and certainly not being able to have an adequate contract going forward with Drew Brees to me is, once again, not uh, undermining Brees' performance, but it does give a message to the rest of the team that, that this club won't take care of the people they need to take care of. Yeah, what's concerning to me right now, actively – the Saints have one hundred and forty million nine hundred and seventy four thousand and nine hundred and eighty one dollars wrapped up in contracts. We have very little space, cap space at all in case we need to try to uh, get somebody off of a uh, practice squad or being able to get somebody who's cut. Uh, I think that played into the Anquan Bolden situation that a lot of people talked about and the Saints wind up signing Knicks uh, today, right? Hicks today. Yeah. So, I mean, what is this team going to do? What is the front office really doing to, to plan for the future? I really believe uh, we need to have Drew Brees another two years at least, you know, because I don't see anyone – really being able to step in and perform at the level Drew Brees has performed at over these past several years, being a New Orleans Saint. All right, Professor, um, let's talk about the defense. Let's go on that side, and I want your opinion as well as um, Barry's opinion here. But, Professor, I, I want you to focus on the defensive line. Do you think this defensive line is ready to hold up against teams like the Packers and uh, the the other prominent teams that are going to probably run the ball at the Saints this season, as well as uh, being able to put some pressure on these quarterbacks? I mean, you just don't know. I think um, <clears throat> both Barry and um, Brendan stated it as well as that. I mean, I, you don't know what you're getting Nick Fairley. Which Nick Fairley is going to show up? I mean, Sheldon Rankins is a rookie. Looks great on paper, but um, I think just as Barry alluded to, the transition from college to pros, and I heard Mickey Loomis talking about something I've been stating for a long time. I heard him saying it today on the press conference. It takes these guys three to four years. Not everyone comes in, you know, like a Luke Keaton or like a Clay Matthews, you know, or or, um, or a Miller out there in Denver, I mean, you know, Von Miller, it just, you, you know, the key is going to be, for me, is the Saints' ability to get a pass rush. I was very distraught when Kikaha went out with that injury, so I'm hoping that um going to have to be a, a, a team or tandem to make up for Kikaha in terms of, of Ali and whoever else is playing, you know, as another pass rusher. You know, but the key is going to be not only, you know, those guys up front, um, who's going to play opposite of Cam Jordan if they play a 4-3, you know, Sheldon and 
Nick Farley in the middle, you know, well, Tyler Davidson and, you know, Bobby Richardson improved from last year. Let's hope so. I think they've had the strength. I agree with Barry 1,000% with Craig Robinson. I think the Saints have gotten a, 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 I mean, a steal. I think if Ellerby can get muscle to be able to play 10 games, and with Anthony, the the linebacking coach of the Saints could potentially be the strength of the unit. But what is absolutely imperative for the Saints defense, Iris Bird and Kenny Vaccaro have absolutely must play a thousand percent better as a tandem. They must play better as a tandem. Roman Harper will be like the coach back there. And finally, Keenan Luce. He's been hurt two years in a row and he's still not one hundred percent. The tandem of Delvin Bro and Keenan Lewis will give the Saints one of the top tandems at cornerback if Keenan Lewis can stay healthy and Delvin Bro stays healthy. I was not happy about Kyle Wilson, you know, potentially being injured or going out. Although I didn't hear him initially on the pup list, so I'm not quite sure if Kyle Wilson has gone for the year or not. But P.J. Williams and uh, your X factors are P.J. Williams and Davis Tolls, because Davis Tolls was a three-year in the world player of the year in the um, the team he played for in Timothy Chattanooga. So what can Tolls and P.J. Williams bring as well as Daniel Swan? if he can prevent the concussions. So you have a lot of the same players coming back, which is which is good for continuity, but injuries play a factor and how can the free agencies, you know, work with the players that were already on the team and ingratiating and incorporating them in to, you know, making the defense play better as a unit because Barry said it, I think, probably. believe it or not, as bad as the Saints were, the Saints had no business losing to the Detroit Lions, Tennessee Titans, and Tampa Bay Buccaneers in the Superdome. You take those three games alone, you're 10 and 6. You take the two Carolina games, you're looking at a team that easily could have been 12 and 4 with a few plays. Basically, six plays, the Saints would have been 12 and 4 with that horrible defense. They were only they only were out of one game. That was the Philadelphia game. And well, I'm sorry, three games. Philadelphia, Houston, and Washington. Three games. The other thirteen, had they played uh one less turnover or one stop, you're looking at a team that could have been thirteen and three. Okay. Good. That's a good point. Barry with this defense uh, and being able to shore up some things on the back end or even having a young guy like uh uh Vaughn out there. You, do you think the Saints are going to really turn over the, the reins to uh, a young safety from the beginning, or will we keep Bird, or would they uh, be tempted to just uh, have Harper out there and have uh, Vaccaro as the free? You no, know, well, here, well, here's what they're, what they're planning on doing. Now, you got to recall, you gotta remember uh, that, uh, training camp and preseason will will play in, uh, heavily into into what we actually see on the field September 11th against the Oakland Raiders at the Superdome. But here's what I think they're planning on doing. First of all, Jarris Bird is the key to everything, okay? Because to me, and this is just my opinion, and I'm glad I'm on this show and not on ESPN New <laughs> Orleans or some other show where I'd get myself in trouble. <laughs> so I can speak a nah, little more you can get here. yourself in trouble well, here. I, you know, don't you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so here's what I think: the the, the Jairus Bird signing is something that they regret horribly, horribly. That it, they were they were sold on this guy. Uh, uh, allegedly, uh, somebody uh, in, in Buffalo, one of the writers in Buffalo, allegedly uh, tried to warn them. That, that he was damaged goods. I don't know how accurate that is or not, but, but neither here or there. Two years into it, they regret it. They, they, they're never going to admit to it, okay? This organization is not an organization that admits mistakes, okay? Brandon Browner proved that because they cut him, but they never said anything about it. They just cut him. <laughs> they never really had a statement on it. They never really said, okay, well, this is why we cut him. They just cut him. It was obvious why. But in that same respect, the, 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 but, but in, in Bird's case, the, the, they're, I don't know 
what, what it is, it, it's not, I don't know if it's royalty or, 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 but I think it's just more foolish pride or whatever is involved, but I do not want to admit that they made a mistake with this guy. Now,